Right across this period, people mobilised for all sorts of fights and for all sorts of reasons. To assume that any one reason can explain the motivations of even any individual is problematic. Jimmy O'Brien joined the British Army in Dublin in December 1915. I was walking up Grafton Street one day and this recruiting sergeant came up to me and asked me would I join the army and I said all right. So I went in and joined, simple as that. He brought me up to a place in Grafton Street, a recruiting office, a beautiful place with smoking rooms, a lounge and a canteen. At 18 O'Brien may have been lured by smoking rooms and the promise of adventure, but was it, as he said, as simple as that? My brother was in Gallipoli and I had an uncle who was a regimental sergeant major. He was killed in France. I had a lot of my relations in the army. A family tradition of service may have influenced many. It had long been part of Irish life. But family tradition was only one part of the wider pressure to join any force. The push to be in step, to do as friends, neighbours, colleagues, teammates were doing. To be part of it, whatever it was, before it was done, must have been strong. The PALS battalions were proof of it. And it was as true of Dublin or Belfast as it was of Manchester, Paris or Berlin. The camaraderie of service was part of soldiering, whether soldiering was in a British Army uniform or in an Irish or an Ulster Volunteers, maybe more makeshift garb. It was part of rebellion and guerrilla warfare. For some, it was part of civil war just the same. This just being part of it may be enough to explain it, but where does that leave the ideologies, the fears and the beliefs that people were clearly prepared to fight and die for? Unionism, nationalism, republicanism express themselves in all sorts of commitments and sentiments, whether going over the top on the psalm or shouted into the neighbouring street of a nationalist or unionist part of Belfast. We underestimate at our peril the commitment of those called to fight, of those who signed the covenant, of those who took oaths of various kinds, who fought when fighting cost lives, livelihoods, when fighting tore families apart. Fighting for better, for more, fighting out of fear, out of hatred, out of faith and hope and knowing a cause to be right, contributes to why so many fought so hard for so long. Joseph O'Connor took a side and fought his cause. I had spent all my life working and praying for this moment and I felt thoroughly satisfied that I was doing what was right. His war was alongside the volunteers in the Rising. He had only sympathy, antipathy, for those who fought as he saw it, England's war. Of course, beliefs and commitments are not as static or as simple as we might like them to be. Hindsight often cannot see how someone could hold seemingly diverse opinions or views. The many soldiers of 1914-18 who end up fighting in the IRA's ranks the British soldiers who sold their guns to the volunteers stop us making easy assumptions on anyone's behalf. This was a more fluid world than any straightforward interpretation might like.